I trust you have found Luke chapter 14 and verse 14. And you'll notice that the Lord is speaking and He says that you need to be prepared for His return, for the day of judgment. And He says that you will be recompensed at the time of the resurrection of the just. And then there's another passage that is very important when it comes to the resurrection. This is found in John chapter 5. In John chapter 5, we have a passage that refers to the resurrection of the just as well as the resurrection of the unjust. And I'm reading from verses 28 and 29. And they say this, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear His voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. It sounds like everyone is going to hear His voice at the same time. From this passage, it sounds like there will be a general resurrection. However, one significant principle of interpretation is this. One passage cannot be interpreted in such a way that it clearly contradicts another passage. And when we look at the teaching of the Bible as a whole upon the resurrections, it is clear that not everyone will be resurrected at the same time. For example, turn with me to Revelation chapter 20. In Revelation chapter 20, In verse 4, it talks about those who have received the mark of the beast or who have refused to receive the mark of the beast and they were martyred for the faith. And now at the second coming, after the tribulation period, they are being resurrected to rule and to reign with Him. Listen to what it says. I'm reading from verses 4, 5, and 6. And I saw thrones... And they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and who had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years." But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. The tribulation martyred saints are a part of the first resurrection. We are told that the rest lived not again until the thousand years were over. That means there's a thousand years separating the resurrection of those who will reign with Jesus Christ in the kingdom period and those who will not. And it goes on to say in the sixth verse, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with Him a thousand years. Now what is the second death? The second death is referred to in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 14 where it says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. 
And so it's clear that those who are a part of the first resurrection will not be cast into the lake of fire. For the second death hath no power over them. And therefore they are considered to be blessed and holy. Because the second death hath no power over them, they are a part of the first resurrection, and they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and they shall reign with Him a thousand years. The Bible makes clear that when we come to the resurrection of the just... It occurs in five different phases. It's one resurrection, but it certainly doesn't happen all at the same time. We read about one phase, and of course this is foundational to all resurrection, and that is the resurrection of Jesus Christ himself. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the first fruits of the resurrection. He is the first to have truly been resurrected with a glorified body. And He is foundational. Apart from the resurrection of Jesus Christ, there would be no hope. No one would ever be raised with a with a glorified body had Jesus Christ not been raised from the dead but the father was satisfied with the work that was accomplished at the cross he was satisfied with the payment that Jesus made at Calvary and therefore he raised him from the dead we read about this in Matthew chapter 27 we read about the time when Jesus Christ was on the cross and we are told in verse 50 that when Jesus had cried again with a loud voice he yielded up the spirit or he yielded up the ghost that is he died and at the moment of his death we are told that behold the veil of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom and the earth did quake and the rocks were split now this was certainly a miracle of God this veil was 60 feet long 30 feet high and 6 inches thick you could have put 10 teams of horses on either end and said giddy up and they would not have been able to rip that veil. But at the moment of the death of Christ, that veil was ripped wide open from the top to the bottom, indicating that access into the holiest was now possible. That's why the author of the book of Hebrews says, Come boldly to the throne of grace, where you can find mercy to help and grace in the time of need. We are to come not irreverently, but we are to come confidently. We are to come boldly to the throne of grace. Yes, the veil was rent in twain from the top to the bottom right after the death of Jesus Christ. And then notice something very interesting. This is found in verse 52. And the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints that slept were raised and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city that is Jerusalem and appeared unto many what a traumatic experience that must have been after the resurrection of Christ the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints that slept were raised. You see, this is history. This has already occurred. A certain portion of those in the grave 
have already come forth and they witnessed in Jerusalem could it be that this is the reason for the great response to the preaching of Peter on the day of Pentecost for this powerful witness preceded Pentecost they went into the holy city and they appeared unto many and then when we turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 we read concerning the rapture passage that there will be another resurrection this is the second phase of the resurrection of the just you not only have those referred to in Matthew chapter 27 and verse 52 but now in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and in verse 16 listen to what it says for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord wherefore comfort one another with these words here we learn that the dead in Christ shall be raised first at the time of the rapture the rapture is still future even from our day it could happen at any moment it could happen today and it's not the dead in general that are going to be raised it's the dead in Christ and no one was in Christ prior to the day of Pentecost for if you look at Acts chapter 1 and verse 5 you will discover that the baptizing ministry of the spirit had not yet begun compared to Acts chapter 11 verses 15 and 16 and you will see that the baptizing ministry of the Spirit began on the day of Pentecost and Paul makes it clear that the Spirit of God has placed believers into the body of Christ it's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 13 for by one Spirit were we all baptized into one body that is the body of Christ so no one is in Christ unless the Spirit of God has put them in there. This happens at the moment of faith. And so from Pentecost to the rapture there will be many who are in Christ and those who have passed on. The dead in Christ will rise first. And then those of us who happen to be alive and remain we will be caught up together with them and together we will meet the Lord in the air what a glorious day it will be this is the second phase of the first resurrection in Revelation chapter 11 we discover that in the tribulation period there will be two witnesses they will witness for three and a half years and after the three and a half years of witness they will be killed and they will lie in the streets for three and a half days and then it says after three days and a half the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them who saw them this is found in Revelation chapter 11 and verse 11 now listen to verse 12 and they heard that is the two witnesses who were dead and who had just received life they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them come up here and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them and so the two witnesses make make up or they yes they make up the third phase of the resurrection of the just and then upon Christ's return and that's what we're thinking about today we're thinking about the return of Jesus Christ the events surrounding his return and upon his return the Old Testament saints will be resurrected we find this in Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 19 also 
in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1 we read about the resurrection of the Old Testament saints and it occurs after a time of great tribulation Isaiah said it this way thy dead men that is those that belong to you Lord thy dead men shall live together with my dead body shall they arise awake and sing ye that dwell in the dust or ye dust dwellers for thy dew is like the dew of herbs and the earth shall cast out the dead the dews are very heavy in Israel and they cause the herbs to shoot forth from the earth one day the earth is going to shoot forth the dead that belong to the Lord Isaiah himself assumed that he would be one of these that would be cast forth from the earth and in Isaiah chapter 26 this occurs after a time of great trial after a time of great trouble therefore we believe that the resurrection of the Old Testament saints will occur after the tribulation period at the second coming of Jesus Christ you also find this in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1 where it says and at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince who standeth for the children of thy people and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that time and at that time thy people shall be delivered every one that shall be found written in the book and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt and so it's after a time of intense tribulation that the Old Testament saints are resurrected it will occur at the second coming of Jesus Christ and then as we have already considered in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4 the martyred tribulation saints are also resurrected upon Christ's return that is at the second coming and they are resurrected to rule and to reign with him during the kingdom one thing becomes clear as we examine the details of the Bible with respect to the resurrections not everyone is raised at the same time some have already been resurrected right after the resurrection of Christ the dead in Christ will be raised at the time of the rapture the two witnesses will be raised in the midst of the tribulation period the Old Testament saints and the tribulation saints will be resurrected at the second coming of Jesus Christ five phases but one resurrection the resurrection of the just it's like a football game it's one game but you have four quarters here we have one resurrection but it's in five phases it's the resurrection of the just I trust that you will be numbered in this resurrection for the second death will have no power over you there's only one way to be a part of this resurrection and that is to believe on Jesus Christ 